Recently, I've been trying to think of a way to make Python easier for newcomers to use with Blender. You may know that I've done some videos on Python before, and these tend to get quite mixed results, it really depends on the subject, but the feedback on those videos has been quite valuable. And one thing that I've noticed is that despite Python being a fundamentally simple language for newcomers to any kind of programming to learn, the design of Blender and the Blender API, so application programming interface for Python, is still confusing for people to wrap their head around. And I think a lot of that has to do with memorizing unnecessary code paths like bpy.data.objects or .textures or .materials, etc. There are also some inconsistencies with naming conventions and how to access certain types of data. And there are lots of answers to these things online, but just because those answers are there, it doesn't mean that using Python for Blender has to stay confusing. So I've made a new module for Blender called EasyBPY. What this does is let you access the Blender API using simple, human-readable English commands. Now just to clarify, this has not been designed for experienced add-on developers who are already familiar with the Blender API. This is specifically for people who have had no experience with it. Or alternatively, for developers that are coming over from making plugins for other softwares with more traditional APIs. This is not a replacement for the Blender API, this sits on top of it, basically as a new layer of abstraction. Using the functionality in EasyBPY does not remove anything from the Blender API, so you can use them in tandem. So this is entirely a personal choice thing, it's just I think there's a gap for people that want to learn how to use Python with Blender, who are falling at the first hurdle of misunderstanding the design of the Blender API. So I'm making this project as a stepping stone to help people get there basically as a guiding hand to help people that want to make stuff for Blender actually go ahead and make it. So I'm going to show you some examples of how this works, but first of all I'll quickly tell you how to install it. So this can be used inside of Blender and also outside of Blender for any add-on developers. To use this with Blender you need to put it inside of the modules folder which is right next to the add-ons folder in your user preferences or app data. So on Windows this would be under your username, app data, roaming, Blender foundation, Blender, then the version, so right now I'm using 2.9, then under scripts, and then this is traditionally where you have your add-ons folder, where you put your add-ons, but you may not have known that you can also put a folder in here called modules. If you don't have one, you can create it, and then put the easy BPY Python file in there. When you open Blender the next time, it will recognize the existence of the file. So from here, say you were in the text editor writing some add-on code, where you usually write import bpy, now you will also add another line, which is from easy bpy import asterisk. Now the asterisk is that star symbol, and what it means in Python is import everything. So now you can use the contents of this new module alongside the traditional API. Note that if you also want to use these functions inside of the Python console in Blender, you also need to type in from easy bpy import asterisk again and then you can just get typing. If you want to use the module for add-on development, say you're making a multi-file add-on, then you can just include the Python file inside of your own add-on files and reference it from there. So let's jump in and I'll show you some examples. The functions have been designed for reference and reference-less workflows. And what I mean by that is you can store stuff in variables or you can just call things by strings. So here you can see I've got object equals get object cube. It's very simple, we know exactly what we're doing. We're saying to EasyBPY, hey, get us the object that's called cube and store it inside of object. You don't need to look through bpy.data.objects and go that way, just plain English, get object. Then what if you want to select an object? You can literally type in select object and then you can give the object name or a reference to it. So the first line here, you can see I've used the reference for the variable called object. Or alternatively, if that's too confusing, you can just do select object cube and provide the name, and it will select the object. No more needing to go through bpy, data, objects, find the object, dot select set, then in brackets, true, you know, none of that nonsense. Just select, object, cube. Okay, what about collections? So if you want to create a collection, what do we write? Create, collection, my collection. Easy. And I can store that inside of a variable, I've done that here, called my call. Okay, what if I want to take a copy of an object and store it in this new collection? Well, copy, object, object, my collection. Easy. And again, of course, if we wanted to, we can provide both of these arguments as variable references. Alternatively, you can just provide strings. It works exactly the same way. Okay, what about materials? Well, create material, new material. And if I want to add it to an object, add material to object. 
then object, and my material reference. And what if I want to get a list of all the material references from an object? Well, get materials from object, object. Alternatively, if I want the names, but not the actual material references, I can get get material names from object, object. See, it's very plain English. And that's the whole design philosophy behind this module. Instead of having to memorize or look through or go through trial and error to find exactly the right place to get the data in Blender, just use plain English. If you can describe what the function does in your head, write it down and see if it works. So carrying on, remove material from object, the object and the material reference. Alternatively, if I know the name of the material, but I don't have a reference yet, then just provide the name. Easy BPY knows exactly what you want to do. Okay, so what about transformations? Say we want to move the object, rotate it, or scale it. I've tried to make this as simple as possible, so I've created three multi-purpose functions. Now the way these functions behave is entirely dependent on what you provide it with. So for example, if you just type in location, then open and close around brackets, we provided no arguments for this. So what EasyBPY will do is instead of having a hissy fit and complaining at you for providing nothing, it will just assume that you want to find the location of the selected object. So it will look to see if there's an object selected, and if there is, then it will provide you the location for it. So instead of reprimanding you for not being precise with your coding, it considers the context of the arguments. If nothing's provided, we assume that something is selected, and then we work from there. Alternatively, if you provide an object reference, now that can be an actual object reference or a string, then we assume that you're looking for the location of that object. So instead of looking at the selected object, we will look for the object you've provided and then provide the location for that. But then what if you want to set the location for an object to actually change data? Well, provide two arguments, location, object, and then a list of the x, y, and z values. If you provide these two things, then EasyBPY goes, oh, okay, they don't want to get the location, they want to set the location. So it will do that for you. All of this functionality is wrapped up in one function, and it works exactly the same way for rotation and scale. So you can use it to get the location, rotation, and scale of an object, and to set the location, rotation, and scale of an object. So what else do we have? Well, Shade Smooth and Shade Flat work pretty much the same way. If nothing is provided, then it just does the selected object, or you can provide the object reference or a string. Hiding and showing in viewport in render, displaying objects as bounds, textured, solid, wired, etc. Just in plain English, display as blank object. Okay, what about getting basic mesh data? So there's more work to be done here. There's lots of functionality missing from this, which is why it's an evolving project. But if we take a look at this example, new object equals create object, new object, new mesh equals create mesh, new mesh. If object exists cube, so I've also added these functions that return a true or false value. Again, it's supposed to be plain English. So if you want to see if an object exists, just write object exists. Same thing with other data types as well, like collection exists or material exists. You can easily get a reference to an object by using get object. So you can see that here, obj equals get object cube. If you want to get the vertices, vert equals get vertices object, then get faces, get edges. You can also rename objects, rename object, object, and then the name. There's also functions to help with selection. So you can do deselect all objects, select all meshes, select all curves, select all cameras, invert selection, and then delete selected objects. Okay, let's do something a bit more complex in a few lines of code. So let's say we have a list of objects which is stored in a variable called objs for objects. Let's make a new collection, col equals create collection best collection. Then let's say we want to link all of those objects to our new collection. We don't need to do a loop, you can just write link objects to collection. Notice the plural on objects. There's another function which is just link object to collection, which expects one object. So both are available for you to use. Like I said before, we can also do if collection exists and provide the name. And then let's say you want to copy an entire collection, including all of the objects that it contains. Duplicate, collection, best collection. And then again, if you want to delete the hierarchy, just like if you were in Blender, right clicking on it and then choosing delete hierarchy, just write delete hierarchy, cool. So you can provide the collection reference or a name. So notice how this is making the English expression of Python more consistent with the actual everyday use of Blender. When we're using operations and accessing objects, when we're just using Blender normally, everything is pretty much in plain English. And I think that's the way it should be in Python. I'll show you one more example. 
cut equals create cube. Yes, you can even make primitives this way. And then for every single type of modifier, we have a function. Add, subsurf, cut, name of modifier. Because every modifier has its own unique name. So there are more things this can do, but there's also a lot of functionality missing because this is an evolving project. I've got it up on GitHub, it's publicly available for you to fork and download, and it's also available on Gumroad. Now the GitHub will be updated more frequently than the Gumroad, and if you want to contribute to this project in any way, then I recommend that you come over to our Discord server and hop into the Code Stuff channel where we can talk about it. Now I just want you to keep in mind that there is a bit of a design philosophy behind this. As I said, it's supposed to be more plain English, and because of that it means that we're sacrificing optimization for the sake of usability. So if you do want to help with the project, I'm not looking for anyone who's super obsessed with optimization, that's just not going to jive with this kind of project. But if you are obsessed with user experience and making things easy for people to understand, then I'd like to hear from you. I should also say thank you to Charon from Just 3D Things for giving me nudges to keep me working on the project. I really want to get on with making more artistic resources for everyone, but I knew that if I started to do that then this project would never get to a point where it would be shared with anyone. So that's why I'm releasing it now, a little bit early. As I say, there's definitely a significant amount of functionality still missing, but if I didn't release it now then it was never going to be released. But with all of that said, this project is now available for you to dig into, so feel free. But hopefully you found this interesting, and if you do give it a try, hopefully this makes Python a bit easier for you to use with Blender. And if you have any feedback, as I say, feel free to jump over to our Discord and let me know. Remember you can follow me on my social media channels, and I just want to add an extra special thank you to everyone who's been purchasing the different resources that I put out and donating on them, because as I'm sure you know, this is a bit of a rough time for everyone, and I just want you to know that I really appreciate it. So thanks for watching everyone, have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time.